Hi, I'm Tori from Teresca Patterns, and I'm here today to teach you how to sew this Moroccan style storage ottoman. And these ottomans are pretty fun. They've got a cool petal design at the top and diagonal strips, and they are zippered at the bottom. And you can fill these with all sorts of things. Originally, when I started making these, I was looking for a way to reuse my sewing scraps, all my little fabric scraps. I didn't want to throw them away. I didn't know how to recycle them. And so I started making ottomans to fill them up. And this one has polyfill, but they can be filled with clothes, blankets, uh, pillows, stuffed animals, all sorts of things. So I can't wait to show you how to make this. First, let's talk about fabric choice. I would choose something that will hold up well over time. So a medium to heavyweight fabric, maybe some upholstery fabric. This is the fabric I'm using today and it is an indoor outdoor fabric and it is fairly sturdy. Uh, if, this, if your fabric frays, you will have to make sure to finish the edges. So I will show you how to do that. I've made this ottoman with Velboa, which is a little thicker and has some pile to it. I've used it with uh, some thin vinyls and that makes a really nice looking ottoman. And I've used it with upholstery, or upholstery velvet. This is a velveteen fabric from fabric.com and it's 72 inches wide. If you search velveteen 72 inches, you'll find it. And it makes a really good, uh, a really sturdy ottoman that will last a while. All right, I recommend you have about a yard and a half of fabric and you will need to cut out all of your pieces. For your base piece, you'll need two of these. You will also need a zipper. Uh, I believe the pattern says 16 inches or longer. You can have a longer zipper. You will need one top circle and you will need 12 of these little pieces. I call them petals because when you're sewing they will go around the top like little petals. Uh, make sure you follow the grain of fabric and you will cut 12 of these. Oh, and an important note for both this piece and these uh, diagonal strip pieces. Uh, often we fold our fabric in half to cut through more than one layer at once. Uh, don't do that when cutting out these pieces, otherwise you will end up with some that are uh, backwards and that won't work. So if you wanna cut through more than one layer at once, make sure both of your layers are right, have the fabric facing right side up. Ask me how I know that. <laughs> okay, and then your diagonal strips, um, make sure that you follow the grain of the fabric. It seems like it'd be easier and take less fabric to do it this way, but then your uh, fabric will pull off grain and it won't look as nice. So put your pieces like this when you're cutting out and uh, have follow the grain of the fabric. You'll notice that I wrote on the pattern piece so this edge to a petal piece, so this edge to a side strip, that'll help you remember which edges to sew. And then this edge at the bottom should be perpendicular to the grain. So that just means that this bottom edge can be, you can have it uh, parallel to the bottom of your fabric to help you remember easily. And if you compare these edges, this one is longer and it's more angled. So if you, if you have your pieces later on and you're trying to remember which is which, this bottom angled one is the, uh, this longer angled one is the bottom and this is the top. And we are now ready to sew. All right, let's start sewing. You have your 12 petal pieces and 12 diagonal strip pieces. And you can see it says which 
edges you'll be sewing together on the actual pattern piece. So I will take one of my strips and one of my uh, petals and put them right sides together. And this pattern uses a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. I've sewn together the first one. Now this fabric that I have uh, frays, so I'm going to finish each edge, but I'm not gonna do that on camera because my serger is over there. So I'll go and serge each edge after I sew it. So I finished my edge with a serger. You can use a serger or you can use a zigzag or an overcasting stitch on your machine. And I am going to press my seam with my fingers to towards the strip and top stitch it. Now I always like to increase my stitch length when I top stitch. And it looks very nice. And I am going to do the same thing to all of my other petals. And I'm not going to make you watch because doing something 12 times takes a while. I wanted to show you how I, um, how I do my top stitching when I'm stitching a bunch of things at once like this. It's called chain stitching. You might have done this when doing quilting. Instead of cutting in between each piece. I just keep stitching when I get to the end. I stop. And then I have a chain of pieces that I snip apart. And if I'm doing a, if I'm sewing a lot of pieces together like with this pattern, I will do as much chain stitching as possible. And that makes things more efficient. Okay, I have all of my 12 pieces. But I'm going to start with just two of them. Push the others aside. Okay. These pieces will all go together like this, so I'm going to place them right sides together and have them match at the top. start working my way down. Now here you are sewing a uh, something with two straight edges to something that curves the other way. So I uh, pin very carefully here and just try to um, pull these two angled pieces as straight as possible and work and I will pin very close to each other around these curves the curve of the bottom fabric I mean okay and now once I got to this get to this point I'm going to sew or I'm going to pin the bottom edge And then I will sew the middle, or sorry, pin the middle, I keep saying so. And then I will pin everything in between. When I'm doing assembly line sewing like this with 12 different pieces, what I typically do 
is I will pin all 12 of these strips all in a row so that I can do all the pinning at once and then all the sewing. So I'll take the next one and just start pinning this right here. And I do it so I have all 12 together and then I sew all 12 at the same time. But that will look kind of crazy uh, when I'm trying to illustrate what to do. So I'm just gonna do one for now. Remember, we're sewing 3 eighths of an inch of seam allowance or one centimeter. And then when we approach this curve angled part, you'll really want to push these wrinkles out of the way with your fingers so that you so that we don't sew in a wrinkle into the seam. And once we get to the straight part, it's a lot easier. So there's just that one tricky part going around the curves. But I've done it with all sorts of fabrics. This is actually a stiffer fabric and it had no problem doing it. Okay. Like I said, I often do all 12 together sewing and then I do all the top stitching. So, uh, now I am going to, oh, I forgot to finish my seam. I'm going to go finish my, I'm going to go serge my seam. All right, I have finished my back seam. And you can get out your iron and press all these seams. I'm just doing it with my fingers. My fabric probably would not do very well with an iron. So I just finger press my seams. Oh, I forgot to mention how far you should top stitch. Uh, some people prefer one eighth, some people a quarter. I actually do something kind of in the middle. It's about three sixteenth. As long as your top stitching is less than however your seam allowance is, then you can just pick a uh, pick a uh, something that works well for you. Mine aligns well with a specific line on my foot. Uh, you also you can put. Um, you can top stitch your seams in either direction, but I prefer to top stitch them towards this curve. However, if you prefer it away from the curve, uh, you can also do that. You can see I sew just a tiny little wrinkle in. You're probably gonna have some wrinkles when you sew these straight edges to the curved edges, especially with a stiff fabric like the one I'm using. do this 12 more or uh, 10 more times what I do is I put them all together in one long strip but I don't uh, sew the, the first side to the last side uh, yet so I'll do all the sewing and all the top stitching of them all in a line and then when we after we're done then there then we'll sew these last the last seam so I'm going to go ahead and start sewing the rest of the strips. I still have two more of these strips to top stitch, but I thought I'd show you how I do this. I roll up my side that I've already top stitched. And I push my seam down with my fingers but I can also put my one hand underneath to push it down.
And when you get to the end, you can also uh, sew from this side. Just make sure that you are pushing your seam down the correct way. Now I have to push it to the right instead of the, to the left. Okay, I've got 12 of these all sewn together. All that's remaining is to sew the final seam. I really like to pin these together with the curved edge on the bottom and the straight edge on the top so I can see exactly how I am spreading apart this angled part. I'm just going to surge this scene real quick. Somehow I forgot to turn my camera back on to show the very last uh, scene that I top stitched, but I will demonstrate that for you now. When I'm doing the very last seam, I find it easiest to top stitch from the bottom and then go up to the, uh, the top edge with the small circle. It's just a lot easier to sew and to keep the fabric out of the way doing it that way. Uh, make sure that you are keeping the fabric out of the way so you don't accidentally sew over two layers. And then you can pull it out and you are left with all the pieces sewn together. And next will be to sew the top circle to this opening. We will now sew the top circle to the rest of the ottoman. So get your top piece. And I've already pinned, uh, folded it in half and pinned each uh, end and then did it again. So I have it divided into quarters. And I have divided the ottoman the same way just by sticking a pin at the seam every three panels. And now I'm going to match these pins up
after I match up these four pins, then I um, pin in between. Now, one thing that I did already, uh, because my fabric is very stiff and it does not stretch at all, some fabrics have a little bit of a mechanical stretch, but this has none, is I went around and did some little snips around the top of these panel pieces, and I, I kept them very short, and I only did a couple per panel. Sorry about that. My three-year-old can't keep his hands off my camera equipment. And make sure to keep your snips smaller than the seam allowance. You may not need to do them at all, but for this fabric that uh, was just very, very stiff, I did have to make a couple of snips. When I'm sewing, I like to sew with the circle part down and the panels, the, the petal parts up. And then I flatten my fabric as I sew. Try to keep any wrinkles out of the seam allowance. And I also have a setting on my machine where I can press a button and keep my uh, needle down whenever I stop sewing. And I have that pressed so that I can go around the circle without um, and keep my needle down. It'll, it'll just help me turn the curves. time to sew the bottom. I have your two base pieces and uh, I have already finished the long edge so I would do that for both of these if you have fabric that frays. And you will need a zipper. Mine is extra long it's like 22 inches but you need approximately 16 and a half inches of zipper so if you have a 18 inch zipper or longer something like that should work or if you're using zipper tape you just need uh, a 16 and a half inches of usable zipper plus some, a little bit of extra at the end and it is optional but I use double-sided tape to keep my zipper in place uh, my this fabric that I have does not do well with the iron it will melt so I don't want to press my seams and I like to use the the double-sided tape to hold the zipper in place and uh, keep it where I want it to be 
Okay, I'm going to pin together these uh, right sides together, these base pieces, and we will be sewing along this straight edge. Now first, I am going to make a mark one inch from each end. And I'm going to sew using my 3 8 inch, 3 8 inch or 1 centimeter seam allowance. I'm going to sew and make sure to top stitch, or sorry, back stitch, and then I'm going to sew to that 1 inch mark and make sure to, to back stitch there too. So this is only 1 inch of seam here, and then I'm going to repeat myself at this end. So I have this sewn. Now I am going to baste in between. So I'm going to increase my, seam, my stitch length to a 4, 4.5, somewhere around there. And just to help make things clear, I am going to switch my thread color. You can do that if you want. I'm only going to switch the top thread for sake of the video. Okay, and I am going to baste along the rest of this straight line. Now if you have, if your fabric can be ironed, then press your seam open. If not, what I'm going to do is put a little double-sided tape alongside each edge. And then use this to press or to, to uh, hold the seam open and in place. This is a really good double-sided tape. I get it from Wawak, W-A-W-A-K. However, it is very thick, or very, uh, it's strong, it's made for leather, and it can really gunk up your needle. So just be aware of that with some double-sided tape will do that. Now one of my seams is held down very nicely and I'm going to repeat that with the second side. Okay, I've got my seam pressed open and stuck in place and this is what it looks like from the other side. And now I have, I'm going to make a mark on this side showing where one inch is away from the edge. One thing I forgot to discuss was zippers. What kind of zipper you can use. I am using a nylon zipper. It is a number three zipper and that works really well. But you can use number five. You can use a, a plastic or metal zipper even. But uh, the if you do metal then you might have to sew over the metal teeth and that's that can break your needle. So. Okay, so the next step is, here, I'm going to turn my whole camera apparatus. 
Okay. The next step is to put the zipper in place on top of the seam. Now you can do this, it's okay if it's longer on this side because we will cut that off, but we want to make sure that up here the uh, end of the zipper where the uh, zipper pull is matches up to this one inch mark. So you can do a couple of things. You can, oh, and make sure that the top of the zipper, top of the zipper is facing the seam. Do your best to center it. And you can, the easiest way is to pin from this side and then sew from this side. But if you really want to make sure that your top stitching is even, then you're going to want to Uh, put it in place and make sure everything is in place and then pin from the top. That can be a little tricky. Uh, in fact, I wish I had started this way. Now I'm going to uh, make sure that the center seam lines up the center of the zipper bit by bit and then I can pin it in place. Another thing you can do is use a double sided tape on the top of the zipper and put it in place that way. But I'm going to do, I don't expect all of you to have double sided zipper, uh, double sided tape on hand. So I'm going to do it this way so you see how this works. And I do like sewing from the top, so I'm going to put my pins on the top. And if you have a hard time getting your zipper perfectly lined up, remember this is the bottom of your ottoman, so it won't be, uh, it won't be, um, so easy to view as the top part. to um, make sure I have, instead of a, now I have my fabric pen, not my normal, and I'm going to mark an inch away from this end. Okay, my phone is due for an update and sometimes it just stops recording. So after I sewed this zipper or I pinned it in place I did mark an inch from the end on both sides with not a normal pen but with my fabric pen because this is the top and I don't want that mark to be permanent okay now I'm going to swivel my camera over to sew okay oh and I'm going to change my thread to a matching thread. Okay, I'm just going to sew with my normal foot because there's enough layers I find that I can do that. But if you're struggling you can always switch to a zipper foot and I sew 3 8 of an inch away from the seam. I'm just going to correct myself. I stitched this at a 3 8 inch seam allowance and then as soon as I did that I realized that I only have 3 8 inch of a seam um, 
underneath. And so I didn't quite catch that seam everywhere. So I re-stitched it at quarter inch. So I'm gonna amend my statement, stitch around on the sides a quarter inch from the seam. So you don't have to go over and do it twice like me. Okay, I actually forgot that it is helpful to use a zipper foot when you go around the uh, zipper pull. So I'm just going to switch to a zipper foot from here now. And here I'm going to make sure the zipper pull is facing that way and I'm going to unzip it just a little. Okay, once I get to the one inch mark, I'm going to pivot. And I am going to stitch across forward and then back forward. I want to make sure that this is a secure seam because over time it'll be uh, opened and closed and open and closed. You want to make sure that it'll hold up. And on this end, I'm going to do the same thing forward and back. This is where if you're doing something plastic teeth or metal teeth, you'll have to be careful sewing over those teeth. Nylon's pretty easy though. All right, we are almost done with this bottom zipper part. And then I'm going to uh, I'm going to trim this zipper off there at the end. And now you need your seam ripper. Because you basted these stitches, they should come out fairly easily. And if you did a different color that stands out a little bit, that can be helpful. The only thing left to do is pull out all the little extra threads. And then before you do the next step, open your zipper part way or all the way. Otherwise, after you sew the bottom to the rest of the ottoman, your ottoman will be all closed and you won't have a way to turn it right side out. So pull out all of the little stitches and then unzip your zipper. Take your bottom piece 
and just like you did with the top, divide it into quarters with pins and unzip your zipper, either part of the way or all of the way. Then I took the bottom, I have it turned right side out still, sorry, inside out. And because I don't wanna have the end of the zipper that ha that's a little thick, I don't wanna run into thickness issues, I decided to pin the middle of these bottom strips and I pinned the middle of every third one and that is how you will divide the, the main ottoman into quarters. And then uh, pin everything together. First the four um, first the four pins and then uh, I will do the rest of that in a minute, but I'm going to show you how to do in between. So uh, I'm going to turn my whole camera again. I pull apart the pieces and then carefully move the middle most part up to the edge. And do the same. I pull the pieces apart, then move my straight edge up to the curved edge underneath. And then I pin in the middle. And in this way, I am able to attach straight edges to curved edges. And you should not need to put any snips in the fabric. This is a big enough circle that it, uh, you should not need to do that this time. Okay, I've done that with one quarter and now I'm going to do the rest. All right, I now have the whole bottom uh, pinned to the rest of the ottoman. And I now am ready to start sewing all the way around. All right, I finished sewing all the way around. Uh, my camera died in the middle. I really need a new phone. But for now, I am going to finish this seam. Okay, my seam is now finished. And the sewing part of this is almost all over. I am going to turn this right side out. And we're gonna top stitch the very last seam. Now you can go either way. You can top stitch it out or top stitch it in. Sorry, out or in. Either way. Uh, I think I'm going to top stitch it in so I'm not having to go over all of these seams. But really, this one at the bottom, it's a big circle. You can go either way that you prefer. done with my um, zipper 
or sorry, not zipper, pins. I'm gonna pull off my, uh, part of my sewing machine to make this a little easier, but you don't have, you don't have to worry if your machine doesn't do that. So I'm very carefully over this zipper end. I, I cut the zipper end to go all the way to the edge. You don't have to do that. You can cut it shorter. Okay, all the sewing is now done and your zipper can zip up and and when it's zipped up, the uh, zipper tape should be uh, covered at least a bit so that hopefully your zipper doesn't scratch your floor or anything like that. And now I am going to stuff this. All right, I have finished sewing. I have stuffed this full of, of polyfill and my ottoman is complete. Now you can stuff this with whatever you want. I used probably about seven or eight pounds of polyfill stuffing, uh, so it's nice and full, but it doesn't need that much stuffing. I just wanted it to be able to be firm enough that my kids can sit on it. Uh, you can use fabric scraps. Those tend to settle, and so your, your ottoman will be a little shorter and a little wider than mine is. You can use clothes, blankets, pillows, anything soft that you want to put in here. Oh, I've made some of these for my kids and they fill them with their stuffed animals. So that's another great way to use a storage ottoman. I've enjoyed sewing this with you today and I hope that you enjoyed sewing too. You can visit my website at toriska.com and find my sewing patterns and my sewing projects. And I hope you will come visit. Thank you.